in today's episode, I'm going to be breaking down why do I think that Sage sucks. Welcome to the little snap, and uh, yeah, that's about it. Sage sucks. Bye-bye, see ya. No, no, I'm joking. Anyway, my point is, this is only about pro games, because the thing is that whenever I see a team that is playing a composition that includes Sage, specifically also on non-split maps and non... Well, Icebox is ex excusable, but that in a moment. But in general, it, at a pro level, whenever I see on non-Icebox maps a Sage being picked, I assume that the team either couldn't make the other compositions work for them, or they didn't have the time or didn't want to prep the more complicated compositions that they could be playing instead. Right now, um, if I'm not mistaken, let me just go to events. I'm gonna check, because I didn't check this. I, this is all, you know, without script, so I, this is just me saying it from, from my head. We're gonna go to EMEA. Let's check what are the agent picks. Uh, so Sage is currently at 22%. She is being picked uh, at Split and Icebox, essentially. There's one pick on Heaven, one pick on Lotus, and one pick on Ascent. And Ascent was Vitality as a counter to the opposing team that was really badly playing and they got um they they got uh, counted by <laughs> sage boosts in a main and b main that was so sad i mean if you're if your team is getting counted by a sage boost in b main and a main then i don't know what to say anyway my point is right now on icebox you kind of need to play sage because you need to plant on b and it's very hard to plant on b without that wall that is still nerfed but it's needed to plant it right sometimes you supplement that um or um or substitute by having a harbor with the cove which is not as safe right because you can get absolutely demolished by utility uh in the cove but it's somehow a substitute so then you can not play sage instead and i would definitely say that i do prefer seeing pro games play with a harbor instead of sage just because of the possibilities that the harbor will give you instead of the sage because when you think about it when you think about it sage has only two pieces of utility let me explain what i mean so you have the slow orbs and you have the wall then you have a heal and a res why do i not count those two as a key piece of utility because the both of them are reactive every single piece of utility that you have in game can be used to initiate something or be like more proactive to make sure that you can use it to your advantage those two pieces of uh, of utility cannot be used in that way the same way a cypher ultimate cannot be used that way in the same way sky heal cannot be used that way that's why i consider those agents not full agents when it comes to the um support that you could give with another character right because the sage heal is meaningless at the beginning of the round and someone has to survive a gunfight to even have value out of it and then the ultimate you can have games even if you're like the best best player on the fucking planet you can have a game where you will not be able to use the ultimate a single time because maybe the bodies will be in bad positions. Maybe your opponents will play around that. Maybe your opponents will just push too much and the bodies will be behind them. Or maybe you'll be playing aggressively and you will be always dying first, which happens in rank. But we're not talking about rank. We're talking about pro play. So essentially, you only have two pieces of utility. And when you're playing on Icebox, that one piece of utility out of two is expected to be used in a very specific way. And if you don't use it in that way, well, then essentially you're kind of trolling, right? So on attack, you're expected to plant with the wall. On retakes, sorry, on defense, you're expected to play retakes with the wall to block the gun uh, run um, uh, vision from your opponents and try to defuse. So it's very more dimensional, right? Now, why do I think that it, it, when I see teams that are playing with Sage are kind of like trolling themselves is let's let's uh, let's talk about the best teams in the uh in the regions so for example since we see that the icebox again i this is a problem with the map i don't consider icebox sage pick like a troll because that's just bad map right but i prefer harbor but harbor requires a lot of efficiency and practice to play him effectively because you can fuck up the walls so so badly now let's take a look at split and I, if my memory doesn't fail me, if I'm not mistaken, not a single time we have seen Fnatic use Sage on Split and not, 
Navi even. Let me check. So we have Fnatic, um, matches, no wait, stats, event, uh, EMEA, regular season split. Yeah, so Fnatic didn't use a Sage a single time. There's a reason for it. They don't see Sage being as valuable for the team because they prefer double initiator. And you can think, like, this composition, like this core, Cypher, Omen, Race, and Sky, is essentially a core setup that you can use on this map. And this could have been Sage. Many teams would have played Sage. But Breach supplements the team to a similar degree, but also is proactive with the ultimates and also is proactive with the stuns. And it can still slow down. Because the reason why people pick Sage on, on, on at Split is to solely slow down a potential attack and also if there's an execute let's say potentially right let's let's say we're playing sage on split we're playing sage on split uh we're playing defense uh we see that the opponents are uh executing b or a our sage goes oh well mid and i can f uh, rotate because for 35 seconds i'm not gonna get flanked from mid fantastic piece of 400 credits like that doesn't really give you much and if you are too proactive and you put that wall too fast, the opponents can just wait 35 seconds and essentially your role as a sentinel is done. This is very limited passive information gathering. I mean, it's not gathering, it's just passive control that you gain for 35 seconds. But that's the main reason why teams are playing Sage. Just to have simpler rotations. Because that's the thing that you consistently can get with her. But at the same time, it only works if there's a very fast executes towards B or A, and you're able to play of that. Now, if your opponents are controlling the space, destroying your wall, then you're meaningless, right? So, uh, let's go back to the compositions. Now, let's check Navi. Uh, Navi matches... No, stats. EMEA. Uh, split. Not a single composition with Sage. And they also, all of them make sense. Like, they tried Gecko, didn't work, then supplemented the Gecko with a Cypher, so they went for Control, and they play with no Sage because they value the control that you have with Viper. And Viper is also a viable pick. Like, this this core that you have here is could have been also supplemented by a Sage instead of the Viper. But the Viper, again, gives you similar amount of stopping power on defense, but gets you more value on attack. Because now you can have potential two lurkers, you have way more utility to um, deny vision, you have proactive ultimates on defense and on offense, because you can do, go on site and just fully cover it or whatever. And you have mollies to additionally check corners or support like executes and so on. And Sage will do what? Voila. Slow CT. Oh, fantastic. And now I push like a brimstone because I just ditched my utility. So, um, let me actually check Liquid. Uh, hmm, yeah, it's not a great example. I don't consider Liquid a, a very strategic team right now, so I wouldn't be surprised if they played Sage. I actually can remember. Uh, let's check. Uh, EMEA, Split. Yeah, of course they played Sage. Oh my god. But, but you get the point. The core is the same as Navi and Fnatic, but they choose to play Sage because it's, as a game plan, it's less demanding. You don't have that much utility now, and you're, the problem is that you are lacking the initiation as well right now. And that Sage doesn't really get you that much value on defense as, for example, a Viper or a Breach would give you here, right? And Split, for example, sorry, Lotus, for example, I have seen teams play... My god, Sage on Lotus and Sage on Fracture. It's very similar, like, approach. Because if you play... Let's, let's do Fracture because it's very, like, it has more tenure, so there's more examples. If you have here a Sage that just walls Fracture like this, right? And you're essentially, okay, brother, well, we just wait 35 seconds it get destroyed and uh, then everything is open anyway. We're not gonna push first tempo because the metagame on this map is very slow approach and defaulty. Right? So, whenever I see that, it, it's a sign of weakness for me. Whenever I see a Sage being used in a composition, it's a sign of weakness. Unless the team will say, aha, 
We're using the sage specifically to counter something, but there's not many things that can counter that can be countered by a sage. Vitality said that they, are, they were countering. I can't remember which team was that, um, but they played on ascend and they solely use sage for the attacking side to make boosts over the smokes on A main and boosts in B main. But that can work like once. But it worked like four times because the opposing team was just headless chickens that didn't realize what is happening, which is just so awkward. But um, out of interest, let's check uh, America's Leagues. America's Leagues, let's see if Loud and Cloud9 are playing Sage on Split. Loud, America's Leagues, Split. I don't see a Sage over here. They play Double Duelist with an Initiator and Viper and Astra. And also, this is a great way of building your lineup because uh, Astra has only two smokes, so you supplement those smokes with the Viper. But you also have the stopping power because you can have more these one ways, multiple like um, vision denial on defense because of the amount of utility that you have. And if you would be playing Sage here, this comp would have been so vanilla, it's actually unreal. Right? Uh, who else? Cloud9. Let's see what they do. Actually, very, uh, when we are at the topic of Cloud9, I have to be. Say, I had to say I'm insanely impressed with them. Uh, they didn't have a lot of time to prep, and even though they don't play Sage, I wanted. I was literally about to say if they play Sage, I give them a benefit of the doubt because they literally started playing with two new players a week before the start of the season, and now we have this. Look, on split, no Sage. Double initiation. The breach could have been easily been saged for the most of the teams, but it's a breach, which gives you much more. And that breach, when you play him on split, right, you can fight for, for main so much more. Like, if you play from heaven, for example, you can literally just gather B side control. It's funny because you can do it like this, with a tap. You can just stun like this at the beginning of the round. It's so fast, no one can actually dodge, dodge it. So you can consistently get the B side control uh, while defending, right? Which gives you so much space. Then you can one-way this and, like, essentially control this if you play Omen, of course, right? If you are playing mid, you can just stun mid at the beginning of the round on market, then put a smoke on, on bottom mid and be, like, again, more aggressive and you essentially have that stopping power by being proactive. That's something... That's something that I think it's so important to understand because those, those agents like Reyna... And, like, Reyna is an extreme example because she literally delivers no value whatsoever um, to the team because the blinds can be also destroyed, so they don't really do that much, right? But Sage is, like, the next target because her utility, even though it's meant to support, it's very, very limited in the amount of flexibility that it represents as an agent. So, I don't know if I wanted to say anything else uh, because, again, I didn't script this video. It's just me ranting. But for me... It's a really, really, really big sign of strategical weakness from a team or deliberate, deliberate choice of not overdoing it uh, when I see a team that is using um, Sage on any map different than Icebox right now. Although, when it comes to Bind, I wouldn't be surprised to some teams right now trying to still play Sage because planting on A is not that easy. But I do think... Teams were very adamant at not changing the, the way they were playing bind because everyone was so used to the fact that you just plant behind the wall that no one wanted to play differently, you know? So, um, yeah. I guess that's it. Just my rant about the Sage. I think I said everything that I wanted to say about this. Um, and, and I do think that there's uh, there's a lot of uh, still issues, specifically in Tier 2. Um, but at the same time, Tier 2 teams don't have the same type of resources that Tier 1 teams have. Like with the amount of analysts and coaches that should think about this stuff. You know? But think about it this way. Whenever you're going to watch now VCT... I would like to give you a task. When you watch a map that is not an icebox match and you see there's a Sage, pay attention to how much value does she get. Not by 
being the player with the gun, but by the amount of utility that is being used and what kind of value is that utility getting? Because it's really not that much, you know? All right, my friends, thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, I hope I answer, uh, answered some of them already, but you can leave a comment uh, and um, I will try to be, you know, explaining them uh, in, uh, in the replies to the comments on YouTube. Thank you very much for watching. Love you all. Bye-bye. See you on streams.